Lots of things get knit flat, which means you work them back and forth, and then all the different pieces of fabric that are made get sewn together. But sometimes it's a lot easier and better to just knit a tube of fabric, to knit it in the round, and then it doesn't have to get sewn up at the end. Socks, for instance, always get knit in the round. It's really much better than having to have a seam somewhere in the leg of your sock. That would be uncomfortable. Hats, of course, also are obviously something that are good to knit in a circle to make a tube out of. When you knit on double-pointed needles, you buy a set of needles that usually come in four or five, most often four. And like straight needles, they come in different diameters, different thicknesses, but the whole set will all be the same number. And when you work with them, you put all the stitches on three of the needles and there's always one that's saved to be worked with. So, since that's a little hard to understand, before I even show you how to set that up, I want to show you how knitting on double pointed needles works. Now here you see I've got a little tube that I started knitting and it's done on a set of three double pointed needles. Here's the fourth and basically take the free needle and work all the stitches. I'm knitting here all the stitches off of the needle that has one of the needles that has the stitches on it, the one that you're up to. So you're knitting all of these stitches basically off that and onto this free needle, well the one that was free, free. But when I finish this little number of stitches here, you'll see what happens in just a second. So now this needle is free and this needle has stitches on it and then I can just continue with this needle going on around and around and around and around. Some people say that knitting on double pointed needles is like wrestling with an octopus. And it's true when you first start out, it's, it can be a little tough, but you do get used to it. And you might even find like I do that you really love knitting on double pointed needles. Double pointed needles kind of always come in this width. They don't come much longer. So it's small. It's easy to whip out on the subway. These projects are, stay pretty nicely contained. One thing about knitting with double pointed needles is that you're always looking at the right side of your work. I'm never looking at, I'm never working from this side. When you knit back and forth, you're knitting the right side and then you turn it around and you're seeing the wrong side of the work. When you knit in the round, you are always looking at the right side of the work. So for instance, this is mostly stockinette stitch here. When I knit that flat, I have to knit one row and then purl one row. But when I'm knitting stockinette stitch in the round, I just keep knitting and knitting and knitting. And that's a really nice thing about knitting in the round. So most people like knitting much more than they like purling. Purling's like the redheaded stepchild. So this way you rarely have to deal with purling. When you do want to have a garter stitch row, which you would usually just knit every row if you're knitting flat, when you're knitting in the round, you have to purl that row. So here I have put in a garter stitch row and I had to create that by purling. Okay, so now I think hopefully you understand how this octopus wrestling goes. Now how do you get that started in the first place? Well, you usually start by casting on all the stitches you need onto one needle. So I'm just going to use my favorite cast on method here, which is the long tail, and I'm just going to cast on you know, I would just cast on a bunch of stitches onto this double pointed needle the same way that, you know, I would cast on in any other situation. The number of stitches that's required. Now, once I've cast on all the stitches, I have something that looks like this. Now then the pattern will tell you to divide the stitches that you have on the needle evenly between your double pointed needles. And so I'm going to get all of these stitches onto three so I can start working them. So I think I have about 14 stitches for each that needs to go on each needle here. And I just slip them purl wise off the end of the back of the stitches here. Here's my working yarn. This is where I'm going to start knitting with. I start slipping from the back and I put about 14 on one. You definitely want to do this evenly, so whatever number of stitches you have, you'll divide it by three, and that's how many you'll put on your needles approximately. Four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 14. Okay, now I have to get another needle out. This guy's just going to hang here, 
He's not going anywhere. The stitches are not going to fall off. It's all really secure. Move everybody to there. They're going on there a little tightly. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this because I'm just showing it to you. But in real life, you want these to be exactly the same number of stitches or as close to it on each needle. Okay? So now I'm going to push those stitches to the center of these needles. And you can see all the stitches are on the three different needles, right? Now this next part can be a little hairy, but just a little bit. There's nothing to fear here. There's nothing to fear but fear itself. It's like an animal where the head is going to start to eat the tail. Now I'm going to start to knit from here back onto the beginning of the first few cast on stitches. And there's one trick to this. Let me just maneuver this a little bit. And the trick is you have to make sure that all of your cast on stitches are sitting with their butts hanging down. So if you look on a cast on stitch, no matter what kind of cast on method you're doing, you have like the top is like a regular straight old loop and the bottom, I just call it the butt of the stitch, right? That's the real true bottom and this is the real true top. And all of the needles, when you turn them in this configuration, you have to make sure that everybody's butts are hanging down and that nobody's twisted. It's kind of hard to picture it in your head, but if they're not like this, you'll end up knitting like an infinity circle and you'll be making like an MC Escher knitting project and you'll never make the tube that you want to do. So that's just something to look for. Okay, so the next part is called joining and knitting in the round. And it's the only part of this that gets a little bit hairy. One way to do it is to just take that free needle and the yarn and then just start knitting. Just start knitting. You don't have to do anything special. And you just start knitting those cast on stitches off. And now I'm going to be able to just start doing the thing that I showed you before. You can imagine, you keep knitting like this and then this needle is going to become free. You know, and I'll just be going on doing uh, this little thing here, which is good times. I'm telling you, this is fun. Do not fear. Okay? Now, I'll show you when I don't do anything special, when I join them, at the very, very beginning where this started, which is here because that's where my cast on ended, always it leaves a little tail, there's like maybe a tiny little spot that doesn't quite match up. I don't even know if you can see that. It's really small. And what I just do is when I'm finished and I'm working away my yarn ends, I just kind of close this up a little bit with this piece of yarn just to kind of, this is like a tiny, tiny little, tiny little opening there. When I first started trying to learn how to knit on double pointed needles, the patterns would say join and place marker. And if you place a marker on double pointed needles at the beginning of a row, it just falls off. And finally, I realized that you really don't need to put a stitch marker when you're going in the round on double pointed needles. The yarn itself, where you started your cast on, pretty much shows you where the beginning of every round is. If I were to hang a stitch marker here, it, it's just going to fall off. Like, I don't even understand how that worked. But when you're knitting on double pointed needles, you don't need any kind of stitch marker to remind you where the round started because you always have this tail where you cast on your stitches to show you the beginning and that also is the same thing as the end of the round. So if I have to knit three rounds, I know I have to hit this, I have to knit each of these bunches of stitches, you know, three times around and there's the beginning and the end. And that's always noticeable, even, you know, when I've worked quite a bit, I can still see that this is where the round starts and ends. So for double pointed knitting, you really don't need to put a stitch marker in, even though sometimes instructions will tell you to do so. And that's it. That's a pretty cool thing, don't you think?